Precision medicine, is it hype or help, fact or fiction? Welcome to Precision Insight. This is a podcast series where the most influential thought leaders and innovators in healthcare sit with me to chat about the latest technologies and tools of precision medicine. What do we have available today as patients, caregivers and healthcare providers? Are we seeing a difference in the healthcare system? What is coming up in the near future? If you want to know more about this incredibly fast moving field of research and development, stay tuned. This morning, I'm with Bob Mayer, the president and CEO of Pure Initiative Pharmacy since 1999. Bob is a pharmacist in Vancouver, has opened 14 pharmacies across the greater Vancouver area. Pure is known for its integrative approach as well as its service of compounding of drugs to tailor individual needs. Bob, you began Pure Pharmacy from the understanding that our health uh, approach to health and wellness needed to head in a new direction. How did you actually get started? To be honest with you, it all started from the, you know, the, one of my, the first experiences I had in uh, my uh, you know, early years as a young pharmacist. And I truly witnessed you know, some of the deficiencies that we have in our healthcare system. And one of the, you know, the turning point uh, experiences, which basically, you know, changed my whole view towards practice of pharmacy was when I had a patient who actually died in front of me just because of the taking the wrong medication and not being diagnosed with the proper condition. Wow. So that was a life changing experience. And to me, it was like, we can't continue practicing medicine like this. We need to be a bit more precise. We need to be a bit more personalized. And in that type of view, I started looking into what else is out there. So I basically challenged the status quo of the pharmacy. And I realized that there's so much out there that we are not taking advantage of. So through the knowledge of, of, uh, of uh, our pharmaceutical sciences and of our pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, I realized that there's, you can actually individualize, make individualized medication for patients. So that's where I got attracted into the area of the pharmaceutical compounding and making the medication specific for the patient's need. Wow. Okay, that must have been a terrifying experience um, uh, as a pharmacist or as any health professional having a patient uh, die in front of you from something that is potentially preventable is definitely life changing. Um, so how, why did you start a whole chain of pharmacies? I mean, that's a, a terrifying prospect for a young pharmacist. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I, uh, the, I wanted to make a change. I mean, yeah. that I, uh, first of all, you know, I, you know, I thrive on projects and I thrive on, uh, you know, coming up with new innovative ways of practicing the pharmacy. And for me, it was like, if I'm creating something, I want everybody to take advantage of it. I want to make sure that, you know, in the area of the pharmacy, I can make a change and I can help to empower and inspire our patients. Wow. Educating patients is extremely important. And if I can do it through one pharmacy, yeah. I realize why can't I do it through multiple pharmacies? Because at the end of the day, the message is the same throughout the whole chain. And at Pure Integrative Pharmacy, we truly want to make a difference. We don't want to just dispense medication because, you know, the, we, are, we are not trained for, you know, go to school for so many years just to learn how to count pills and to tell the patients, you know, take it three times a day or take it with food or without food. There's much more that we can help. We can be a hub of health for our patients. And that's the whole philosophy at Pure Integrative Pharmacies. Fantastic. And, and you mentioned pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. And I have to be honest, as a, a medical student, um, learning about this was perhaps not the highest moment of my education. Um, <laughs> and just to, just for the uh, the listeners, um, pharmacokinetics, as far as I remember, is the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion of the drugs. That's uh, right. And then the pharmacodynamics is the actual effect in in the human. Is that about right? Absolutely. You're right on the track. You did your study very well, uh, Martin. So well, uh, I have to... A plus on this one. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I have to be honest. I mean, it's, it's only since I got into this work with uh, pharmacogenetics that I've had to revisit all those aspects. And, and uh, so I can actually... Refresh your mind. That's great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, I mean, talking about pharmacogenetics, um, the issue of, of uh, introducing this new sort of service, uh, how did you get interested in this and, and where do you see this sort of uh, technology going? 
You know, I actually have a very uh, interesting, uh, you know, experience on this particular case. I mean, that I think I uh, met you and uh, Dr. Mark Empress about almost three years ago, two and a half years ago. And, uh, you know, I was mesmerized. It was great, you know, nice story. Yeah, it's beautiful to have personalized and precision medicine. But I think what actually hit and what actually, you know, turned the green light in uh, my brain was when I actually did a test myself. So... <laughs> It's very, you know, it, it, I'll uh, give you the, you know, I'll tell you the story because it's, uh, in, it was empowering for myself. Mm -hmm. So for last 14, 15 years, you know, my family doctors, my cardiologists, they all have been telling me, Bob, you know, you're gambling with your life. You should be taking statin medications because your LDL is up, your ratio is up, yeah. you know, it's, in the, it's it, you know, it's above the normal range. And if you don't take it, you know, you're going to end up with a heart attack or a stroke, you know, the yeah. cholesterol is going to, you know, have the keep, you know, bugging up your health. And to me, it was like, you know, I'm a pharmacist. I know what the statins do. You know, I've seen side effects of my patients coming with, you know, uh, the muscle pains, with, you know, their liver enzymes going up. Some of them coming up with even, you know, high blood sugar. I don't want to take it. I'm going to take anything else, but not statins. Yeah. So, Martin, between me and you for last 14, 15 years, I've been taking every single supplement that you can imagine. <laughs> and the good thing is I have access to them, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, from fish oil to vitamin D to, uh, you know, like coenzyme Q10, you name it. Everybody, you know, everything which came in the market, I gave yeah. it to them. Unfortunately, every six months I would go for my, you know, lab uh, test, same result. <clears throat> the cholesterol kept going up. Nothing was changed. So when I did this test uh, that... Uh, uh, from uh, Genexus, it was mind blowing. When the result came, and the beauty about you know the test, it's not just a test; it's the software and it is the treatment uh, protocol which is in the in this system. When I put my LDL number, my HDL number, my ratio, my weight, my age, my lifestyle, you know, like you know, liver enzyme, you name it, yeah, the result was mesmer mesmerizing for me. It told me that I should not be taking actually one of the statin, yeah. and that was the one that the doctors wanted me to take. Yeah. And instead, it told me that I can take a different type of statin. Right. In the same class of drugs. Yeah. It's going to be effective, and it's not going to have any effect on my liver enzymes. My body is able to metabolize it properly. Fantastic. So believe it or not, next day I was at my doctor's office. I got the prescription. And thanks God, I know a good pharmacy which can do <laughs> <pay> my prescription. <laughs> and I, you know, I started taking the medication. Fantastic. Again, every single morning when I wake up, I yep. take my statin medication. Amazing. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to go and get my test on. And I'm certain, you know, my LDL is going to come down and my cholesterol ratio is going to be much better. And that has given me a peace of mind. Yeah. That, that has been so confident. Yeah. That means that we'll be having these conversations in 10, 15, 20 years' time because you'll be oh, healthy. Oh, absolutely. I think you just saved, you know, you just added another 10, 20 years into my life. Fantastic. And that's priceless, right? I yeah. mean, that, that's so powerful. I cannot, uh, you know, like, uh, I cannot tell you how important it is for us to have such a tool. Yes. And, and your story is not dissimilar to other people I've heard, whether it's about cardiovascular drugs, pain medications, mental health, uh, the individual stories of the impact of this information on people is quite dramatic. Um, and where they've been putting off having medication um, or struggling to find the right medication. It certainly seems to have changed their uh, uh, ability to be able to select drugs safely and effectively. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So now, now you've, you've been one of the uh, first uh, groups of pharmacists in, um, uh, to, to really engage with pharmacogenetics in a big way. How are your pharmacists actually doing this on the ground? What, what happens if you're a patient and wants uh, to get this sort of service? Uh, the, basically, I mean, that, you know, we, uh, we are uh, carrying, you know, the, the, this, the kits in our pharmacies. Yeah. All of our pharmacies and our staff have been educated, you know, about this particular test. Yeah. They all have had a chance to, you know, to uh, attend the webinars and to read the, you know, the training materials. And I've been, you know, like, you know, promoting it and I've been talking to them, you know, yeah. almost on a daily basis. 
And, uh, in, you know, as a matter of fact, actually, one of our pharmacies actually made a video of it. So we can post it on the YouTube and our social uh, media platforms so we can educate the patients. And it's very simple. Patients can basically just walking into our pharmacies and uh, they can basically, you know, get the kit. We can show them how to uh, do the samples and they mail it. And in two weeks, they get the result and they're encouraged to share the results with us as, a, as their pharmacist. And then we can take a look at it and see if they're on the right medication, if the dosage is right. More than any most important part, if they're on multiple medication, we can actually find out if there's any drug interaction. Yes. And through the consultation with their physicians, we can have that triangle of the care, which is, you know, patient, physician, pharmacist. That's been the, you know, that's been like one of my dreams that to really create this triangle. And now with this test, I think we can do it. Because I the doctor that does not have to guess anymore, right? No, that's right. And so, I mean, this is a, I mean, stepping back a little bit, um, pharmacists in Canada have quite a significant role and it does vary from province to province. I mean, Alberta has much more scope of practice for their pharmacists than say uh, some other provinces. Now we're talking about pharmacists having access to really quite advanced decision-making tools. Uh, do you see the role of the pharmacist evolving in terms of helping people with identification of medicines and, and maybe even taking over from doctors a little bit in, in that role? I, I, I truly see that. And I think that's going to get evolved and it's going to help the doctors and it's going to help the patients. At the end of the day, we know that we have a shortage of, you know, healthcare practitioners out there, especially with, you know, with the aging population and all the advances which is coming, we need to be more involved in the patient's care because I, you know, I call ourselves, we are the hub of the health. We are the, you know, get the gateway for the patients to get access to the healthcare because you don't have to make an appointment to go see your pharmacist. No. You can just walk in anytime to any of our you know, pharmacies and you can have access to a pharmacist. So the more empowered and the more tools we have as a pharmacist, that we can help our patients. Absolutely. I mean, I think that I agree with you that uh, the evidence certainly is there from the United Kingdom that integrated pharmacists into a, a network of care uh, is really helpful at reducing adverse drug reactions and taking time away uh, from the doctor consultation um, so that there is more time for diagnosis and care of the patient. Um, and, and in a sense, do, do you see this move happening across Canada? Do you see negotiations with the BC government about how it can be expanded? Yes, I can. I mean, I, I think BC is going to be probably the next province after Alberta, which yeah. is going to give prescribing authorities to the pharmacists. So our college is working you know, really closely with our association and with all of us to make sure that they come up with the protocol, which is going to help us to be able to prescribe certain medications and basically decrease the workload on our uh, healthcare system. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, you were talking about the pharmacogenetics being available to you, and you mentioned liver function. Um, do you see the need to have more information into your systems as well, such as kidney and, and liver, uh, so that you're able to customize even further? Absolutely. I think, you know, the collaboration, you know, with, uh, with the getting the results, you know, from the you know, from the labs, you know, especially, you know, from life labs and entering all those parameters into, you know, to, to the software, I think it's going to help us to come up with even a more precise dosage and the selection of the medication for our patients. So where do you see all this super technology and personalized uh, precision medicine moving in the future? What, what, do you, what do you see down the road in, in, say, three years, five years time? I think in three, five years time, you know, we will be able to you know, eliminate all these trial and error guesses and precisely come up with the right medication and the right dosage for the patients. Your system is going to be so different from your, you know, your brother or your mother or your sister or, you know, or somebody else. And we have to truly pay attention to that. Yes. Because that's an important part. That's an important fact that if we ignore it, we basically just going to, you know, keep playing with the patient's health. I mean, I look at the number, you know, the top 10 uh, reasons people get admitted to hospital. Yeah, drug, absolutely. You know, adverse reactions of the drugs or the wrong yes. dosage or the wrong drug. I've witnessed that myself personally many, many times. Yes. Or patients not taking the medication that they should be. 
because they have a fear. You know, there is a fear. I mean, that, you know, it's uh, as a pharmacist, I can tell you that, you know, I get my patients coming a lot of times and, you know, they, they keep telling me that my doctor wants me to take this pain medication or this antidepressant and I just don't want to take it because I know it's going to, you know, give me side effects. If we have a tool like this, like, you know, this Genexus and the Trich GX, we can actually ease that fear and that anxiety of patients. That anxiety itself, not only, you know, it doesn't help the patients to get a better care, anxiety itself is, a, you know, is a condition which can actually cause more and more problems in our system. So to me, it is, to me, that's where the future is going to be. The future is going to be more precise medication, more precise dosing, and helping patients to live a better quality of life. Yes. I mean, I think that's a, we all want that, right? Absolutely. That is what we all do want. And, and I think that's a very interesting angle where we're talking about adherence because uh, the wastage of medication, uh, a lot of people talk about the number of prescriptions that are taken and then flushed away because people are anxious about taking those drugs. Um, and it definitely is an area where I think people haven't focused too much on the value of precision prescribing, um, that you can reduce people's anxiety. And that makes, as you said, that makes people feel better. I mean, just reducing my anxiety about the therapy has a huge benefit. And it's part of the placebo effect, if you like, yeah. that uh, now, okay, so the pharmacist has been through everything. They've reassured me they've got the technology that helps me understand that this drug will not uh, or is much less likely to harm me. Uh, I'm going to feel more confident about taking it for two or three weeks to see what I get the benefit um, that, that I may not have done if I didn't have that information. So I think your point about anxiety reduction is, is, is really important and, uh, and a major message, I think, to people. Is there Absolutely. anything else that um, you think that may be happening in genomics that generally that you think pharmacists will be involved with? I think uh, the, uh, the, in the genomics, we are also going to be seeing much more information about what type of, you know, for example, food or diet this patient should have. Right. What type of supplements or vitamins this patient should have. Yes. Or what type of exercises is going to fit this particular individual yeah. the best. And, you know, with more advanced technology out there, we are going to be able to do that. So not only we can, you know, tailor make their medication, but we can also tailor make their diet, their lifestyle. I mean, that those are all important factors. And I think with, you know, with the genetic testing, we're going to be not only the genetic testing, the other testing which are out there, just like the biomarkers, you know, the metabolites, the environmental factors, we can truly get to the, the narrow down all the therapies that we want for the patient. Fantastic. And beside that, I mean, that I also see, you know, the decrease in the healthcare cost. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that I, I know, I mean, that in, in, in most of the cases, yes, the patients are not paying themselves, either the government is paying it or the third party insurances are paying it. But at the end of the day, it is us who are paying it. It's us, the taxpayers, who are actually contributing towards the healthcare expenditure. And if I show you the bin that I have inside our pharmacies, which we call it, you know, like a drug disposal bin, you will be mesmerized to see how much medications are being wasted on a daily basis. Like I'm talking about, let's say in one pharmacy, I have a big, you know, like a, probably it's about 20 gallon, you know, like, you know, bin, which gets filled up every two weeks. Wow. And we are not, you know, and in our pharmacies, you know, I mean that, you know, we don't dispense too much, you know, like, you know, prescriptions because we try to, you know, encourage our patients, you know, to uh, do other modalities, you know, besides just taking care. Yeah. Imagine, you know, like on, on, in big pharmacies, which are doing like, let's say three, 400 prescriptions a day. Just imagine how much of base medication they're getting back from the patients. Why? Because they started taking this, it didn't do the job. The doctor changed it to a different medication. The second one didn't work. They're going to change it to the third one. And then the third medication is going to cause some drug, you know, it's going to cause some drug adverse reaction. It's going to cause some side effect. Yeah. Then your doctor is going to give you the fifth medication to basically counterattack the side effect of the fourth medication. Yeah. You see where I'm going with this vicious cycle? Yeah. So if you, from day one, you can have this test and you can find out what medication precisely is going to be good for that patient, 
you're eliminating all, not only the interactions and the adverse reaction and the anxieties, you're decreasing the cost for this patient. You know how much we can save as a society? All, I mean, that you know, our biggest expenditure in the healthcare is what? Medications, right? Yeah. yeah. So if we can use that in, let's say, mental health, we can use that in counseling, we can use it in a proper, you know, like, you know, the doctor visits. Isn't that what we all want? Oh, absolutely. And you've given us an image, uh, and thank you very much for this conversation, but you, you've given me an image particularly of these huge bins filled with drugs that cannot be used, that have to be thrown away. Um, and that's a picture that's, that's really quite disturbing. Um, and, you know, amazing to hear your experience, uh, why you got into this and, and how engaged you are. And I'd like to thank you, Bob, very much for your time. Uh, fantastic conversation. Look forward to chatting again. My pleasure. Thanks so much, Martin.